What's up guys, this is Share talking, welcome back to my channel, in today's video, let's talk about news for months in Saga Reuniverse. First of all, they announced a new banner related to Saga from Tier 1. We have Joker, Yud's Ray Pierce, you may know who he is, it's actually a spoiler, feels that it's now using clubs, and Emilia back to guns. We have all the information about these characters already, we'll be discussing in a few. There is also a new event called Seeker of Truth, that has HP cap now on 2190s, it's always 10 more than the game shows, so 10 more than the current event, nothing changes too much. Now we are on Reddit, in a post by Hans43, he translated the Pioneer's video and compared the JP to global buffs. Thank you so much for doing these amazing jobs as always. Emilia had a lot of buffs, they buffed SDR and Agility so that she can inherit skills from Pink Tiger style, but they won't be on full potential because, well, SDR and Agility are still not that high. They buffed her Endurance because she's a boss specialist and her Endurance was too low. Her Dex what it was increased a little to just increase a little of her damage. Well, we should talk about skills first. Skill number one is a 1 BP C power attack that deals blunt damage, it's actually strong for the cost, nothing too special. Skill number 2, 6 BP cost, S power, blunt and sun. Well, sun is new and the lay was removed, so it's actually a pretty good skill. I have to say that in the near future we're gonna get some amplifies for some skills that will allow them to reach double S power and 6 BP cost. Emilia will be able to amplify, so it's more about the added element and also her passive mechanics. Skill number 3 is a 10 BP skill with triple S power, Blunt and Sun and will buff OD Gar to the party by 15 points, excluding herself. She still gets OD by the use of skill, so it will be nice to use it with characters like Time and Mask that benefit a lot from reaching OD. Now, for passives, the first one, when she reaches OD and attacks, she will activate skill number 3. So it's a chase that will always happen. And then she will buff OD to the party. Uh, it's good and strange on the same time. If you're using a full party, then this will not help, because she will buff OD while everyone is OD, so no one gets anything. But if she uses this by herself, she will be capable of getting uh, some OD gosh to the party, allowing them to use OD on the next turn, for example, but they will be separated on the fight. Besides, she still has 25% chance to chase with this attack when she uses any sort of attack. On overdrive, she can even chase two times if you are lucky. That's not so uh, common to happen, but you can also just wait for a moment when you reach overdrive and use skill number 3, and then she will chase again, so you give at least 30 points of OG gauge for the party. Can be interesting, but we'll see. Skill uh, Passive number 2 gives herself uh, four different effects. It's the same passive as we saw in Darius, then on Sword, Mac, and when she uses blunt attack, she triggers an attack boost increasing damage by 10% and also 2 BP. This is amazing because she will always be using blunt attacks and this makes her a 5 BP character. So skill number 2 has good damage and she can use this almost any time and she needs because it will trigger the sun part of the passive, recovers her HP by 170s and gives her a medium defense boost, that is exactly 20% damage reduction. When she has 3 stacks of this, she's gonna be very, very defensive. The good thing is that she actually has very good speed, she will more likely attack before the enemy, reaching the same defenses as Mac, for example. Uh, but she doesn't have a full damage reduction passive, she starts to fight trying to stack defense boosts, and they gave her great overtension, that gives her 30% increase at all times, 45% combo and 60% on overdrive. So on overdrive she can reach as much as 90% damage because of 3 stacks of attack boost for example. It's good and besides that point you should be using, um, I don't know, skill number 2 or just save VP to skill number 3. But if you save VP you have that problem of, um, well, one turn you won't be able to trigger the defense boost but at least you can do turn 1, then turn 3, and then turn 5, see, because she gets 5 EP, she can use skill number 3 every 2 turns. Well, Emilia will crash with Lian for blunt damage, but she still has Sun, something that we have Global X Silver for, but Global X Silver prefers spin off victory buffs that buff STR and Agility, if you want to bring P enough peace, for example, because you need to buff Will. 
then you can bring this Emilia, and she'll work pretty well. I have to say that she has very good potential. I will be giving her at least a SS plus grade because of the passive designs, but she's still kind of skippable. She only brings OD buffs to the party, besides doing damage uh, and being sustainable, but sometimes when we are fighting a hard challenge, we don't have space for something like this. She is benefiting uh, some other styles, but she does not bring too much herself. So, good but skippable. Now, the next one is Fuse, and he got a will buff, and that's it. Okay, when he attacks, he recovers on BP and restores some HP by around 170s. Well, this is nothing special for current game. The second one, attack damage increases by 15%, and when being attacked, damage will be reduced, but he counters with Brute Strike. It doesn't say here, but it should be for direct attacks only. This is a B power attack that has a chance to bolt the buff intelligence from the enemy up to 10%, and then paralyze. Well, um, the damage is not that good, and the counter mechanic here is just too strange, because uh, you want to debuff intelligence of someone that just attacked you directly. Those are physical attacks. So it's more for a hybrid fight and even then look on his intelligence. It's not something really good. It's kind of a waste. At least they gave him 15% damage. And then he has great block tension, increasing resistance to damage by 25% and damage by 30. So he has 45 all, all the time. For skills, well, the first one is Blast Heal Plus, something really new that we got for Amplified. Very strong, C power damage and heals a lot, something around 900. Uh, then the second one is a Column Attack with A power. Well, we have Mask with Throw, now he has a Column version. It's not that strong, you won't see him solo farming, unless it's a very, very specific story stage, you need to be used with someone else. Then skill number 3 is a full AoE blunt attack with 8 power and grants the enemy morale down medium, decreasing their damage by 25% for 2 turns. Well, there's 91% uh, agility, good, but I cannot guarantee that he will attack before the enemy all the time. If he does not, it will only last for 1 turn. Um, and because he has 4 BP per turn, he can use this almost every 2 turns. Sometimes you won't have enough. This comes with a problem. We'll get a future version of Joe that can do Monale Down Medium every two turns and she even uh, has extra BP to do something else in other turns. I don't think this is very important for Remembrance, we already have a lot of support and uh, I guess you don't need Monale Down. Also, if you summon it for the newest version of Barbara, she grants a lot more damage reduction than just using Fuse. So, again, kind of similar to Emilia, but actually much worse. He is totally skippable because of clashing with too many supports for the weapon that he carries. Now, the last one is Joker, and he's using Ray Pierce. We have uh, 65 Endurance now, still pretty bad. Tax rate reached 120, the highest one in the game. His agility is very high as well, so he will do damage, will do fast, but he's too fragile, and his design is like a Berserk. For uh, skills, let's see, the first, it's a 10 BP, 4S attack that uses Pierce and Shadow, but it's a random attack that is also fast, so you don't know which one he will attack if there's multiple enemies on the field. Uh, then, after using the attack, you get Heat Up, that will increase his damage for the whole fight by 15%, and then recover uh, a random value of BP between 1 to 10. That's cool, but, well, he gets into Berserk. So, when you are in Berserk, you cannot choose the skills that you're gonna use. So, you will know if he is going to use a normal attack or a skill. And uh, he has a 50% chance to cure himself from own status island. So, after using the attack, you can actually recover, but with a chance. And when all allies are alive, he has a 50% chance to evade, because he does not have damage reduction passives. He wants to evade in order to survive. Now, uh, this 15% can seem good, but in all honestly, uh, you have to sacrifice LP and then you can just get closer to death because of that. Uh, then, uh, after discussing this attack, you have to remember that Darky also has a 4S attack with um, 8 BP cost and it's also Pierce and Shadow. In his case, he loses HP, 80%. I don't know what thing is worse here. 
To be honest, you can actually just use that attack with Darky when you are using an AoE heal and he gets back the HP he lost. In this case, you get into Berserk, it's kind of easier to survive than Darky. But on the same time, for a long fight, it's very, very NRNG heavy. Uh, then the second passive, when he attacks a weak target, he gets 30% damage increase. And also, uh, will trigger a heat up, getting up to 5 stacks of 10%, max potential of 50%. And always recover 1bp when attacking weak targets. But as a penalty, he gets self-defense down for a maximum of 5 times in a battle. So, uh, defense down, actually stacks, uh, it's not guard down, so uh, minus 20% resistance, uh, and then after 5 turns, actually 6, he doesn't get this anymore, but by that time, well, he may have died many times. Uh, and then we have fired up 7 with 40% damage increase, so let's uh, discuss this, he has 40% at all times. For farming, for example. In boss fights, after 5 turns attacking weak targets, he gets up to 90%, and after using the skill number 3, he will get 15% for each time he uses. Well, it's still pretty, pretty uh, confusing, since uh, you're gonna use this fast attack, have the defense down, if he does not evade, he's just gonna die. So, is it really worth to bring him into a fight? I don't know, man. Uh, if you have Shooter, he deals... Uh, Pierce damage already, and he is extremely sustainable. He just gets uh, defense boosts, he self heals. Well, maybe for Shadow, but we just got the Global X version of Rouge, and he gives uh, more to the party. I don't know, it's very similar to the latest Johan design, where he just gets poisoned and gets some heat ups, but in the end, he barely does more damage than other characters. This guy here also will not be so strong. We can use characters that can self buff during battle to do more damage on long run than just uh, having a character that has a chance to uh, recover from Berserk and keep using attacks that just gets him close to death. Now, skill number 2 is an 8 pp column attack with pierce damage that hits 2 times with C power. And I have to say that the final damage output will be double S. And we have a version of Darky that has a column attack with shadow and pierce that is also double S power. The difference here is that each time it attacks, you have a chance to buff endurance and dexterity from the enemy. Endurance will increase the damage, uh, dexterity will try to decrease the damage you receive for some specific attacks, and you can even try to evade, not that it's gonna work for most challenges anyway. His intelligence is 86%, won't work in very hard challenges unless you bring intelligence buff, so it's just kinda here. I don't know how many times you're gonna take full advantage, but at least the damage is very good for only 8 pp. For skill number 1, we have a single target attack that hits 2 times for only 2 bp. That's actually nice, remember that he gets 4 per turn and it will try to debuff the enemy endurance for each hit. Uh, endurance debuffs are not the best way to increase damage, but, well, it can work if the enemy does not have extremely high will. If you can manage to debuff every turn, you're gonna get a little extra damage. Well, I have to say that if you have uh, at least two versions of Darky, the two latest ones, you we will already do more damage with Darky by just stacking the extra debuffs and using the attacks that are stronger for long fights than just relying on heat ups and surviving against yourself. So uh, it's a cool character, just uh, too RNG for my taste. So uh, this better will receive um, a bronze award, I guess, because even when you consider that Emilia is good, She's still necessary. Well, these are the characters and I'm still undecided if this will be a bronze plus or a low silver award, but I have to see that even if it is, it's an easy to skip banner. With all that said, what do you think about this all? Please see here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.